Love Actually is a 2003 Christmas-themed romantic comedy film written and directed by Richard Curtis. It features an ensemble cast composed of predominantly British actors, many of whom had worked with Curtis in previous films and television projects. Mostly filmed on location in London, the screenplay delves into different aspects of love as shown through ten separate stories involving a wide variety of individuals, many of whom are shown to be interlinked as the tales progress. The story begins five weeks before Christmas and is played out in a weekly countdown until the holiday, followed by an epilogue that takes place one month later. The international co-production between the United Kingdom, the United States and France, the film was released in the United States on the 14th of November 2003 and a week later in the United Kingdom to generally mixed reviews. Love Actually was a box office success though, grossing $246 million worldwide on a budget of $40 to $45 million. It received nominations for the Golden Globe Award for Best Motion Picture, Musical or Comedy, Frequently shown during the Christmas season, the film has proved more popular with audiences than critics and has been discussed as being arguably a modern-day Christmas staple. A made-for-television short film sequel, Red Nose Day, actually aired in two different versions on BBC One and NBC in 2017. Initially, Curtis stated, writing with two distinct and separate films in mind, each featuring expanded versions of what eventually would become the storylines in Love Actually. Those featuring Hugh Grant and Colin Firth. He changed tack, however, having become frustrated with the process, particularly inspired by the films of Robert Altman, as well as the films such as Pulp Fiction, and inspired by Curtis having become more interested in writing a film about love and what love sort of means. He had the idea of creating an ensemble film. The film initially did not have any sort of Christmas theme, although Curtis's penchant for such films eventually caused him to write it in this one. Curtis's original concept for the film included 14 different scenarios, but four of them were cut, two having been filmed. The scene in which Colin Firth attempts to chat up the female caterer at the wedding appeared in drafts of the screenplay Four Weddings and a Funeral, but was cut from the final version. The music video for Billy Mac's song Christmas is All Around is a tribute to Robert Palmer's 1986 video, Addicted to Love. Curtis had spoken negatively about editing the process of the film, which he labelled in 2014 as a catastrophe and the only nightmare scenario that I've been caught in. The film was rushed in order to be ready for the 2003 Christmas season, which he likened to three-dimensional chess. Following Tony Blair's resignation as Prime Minister, pundits and speculators commented on the potential anti-American shift in Gordon Brown's cabinet as a Love Actually moment, referring to the scene in which Hugh Grant's character stands up to the United States President. In 2009, during President Barack Obama's first visit to the UK, Chris Matthews referred to the President in Love Actually as an example of George W. Bush and the other former President's bullying of the European allies. Commenting on this, media aide John Burchard described the US President character as a sleazy Bill Clinton-George Bush hybrid. In the scene is in question, the swaggering president bullies the prime minister and then sexually harasses a member of the household staff. In September 2013, David Cameron made a speech in reply to Russia's comment that Britain was a small, insignificant country, which drew comparisons with Hugh Grant's speech during the film. Now, I recall watching this film back in 2003 and being frankly blown away by it. It was just such a clever original imaginative concept about combining so many different characters and so many different stories and intertwining them interweaving them and as it comes to the end of the movie you realize that they're all linked in some way or another it's just such clever writing the acting from all the cast is on point and there are far too many to mention but of course i had to have some of my favorite stories within it not every story worked perfectly for me but of course for the ones that you don't like they're the ones that are just excellent it's one of those films with so many stand-up moments that you always just remember. For example, when Karen, played by Emma Thompson, finds out that Harry, played by the late, great Alan Rickman, that he's now bought a gold necklace for his secretary, Mia. Emma Thompson acts the scene absolutely perfectly, as she now invokes so much emotion when she realises that the necklace is for someone else, and she's only got a Joni Mitchell CD. As Joni Mitchell's Both Sides now plays, Emma Thompson just invokes so much emotion and it just draws you in as a viewer. Of course, you later find out that her brother is the Prime Minister, of course, played here by Hugh Grant. And the way she just embraces him in that scene is just so touching and moving. The other famous scene that always stands out to me, of course, is when Mark, played here by Andrew Lincoln, who is best friends with Peter, played by Chitwell and Jofa, but is also secretly in love with Peter's new wife, Juliet, played by Kira Knightley shows up the door carrying a boombox, playing a Christmas carol, and has large cue cards. While Peter is inside watching television, Mark tells a message of his deep dying love for Juliet through these cue cards. And as he walks away down the street, Juliet runs after him and gives him a quick kiss and returns inside. It is an iconic moment in cinema history. Even the story now with Jamie Norello, Jamie of course being played by Colin Firth, 
where Jamie now meets a Portuguese high housekeeper, Aurela, who does not speak any English. Despite not sharing a common language, though, they share a mutual attraction for each other. Jamie, of course, later returns to England and later realizes he's in love with Aurela and begins learning Portuguese. He returns to France to find her and ends up walking through the town with her father and sister and then gathering additional people as they walk through to her waitressing job. And in a basic and often grammatically incorrect Portuguese, declares his undying love for her and he proposes. She says yes in broken English, showing that she has now also too learned how to speak some English. And it's these sort of iconic and touching moments within the movie that just make it stand out in one of those films that you'll just never forget. There's some real fun stories like Colin Tony and the American Girls. Some annoying stories too, like for example the story of Sam played here by Thomas Brody Sangster, who's now in love with an American girl in his school and wants to impress her. His dad here, played by Liam Neeson, of course tries to help him in doing so. I just found this story to be a little bit obnoxious and a bit too self-indulgent. Then of course there's the incredibly sad and frustrating story of Sarah, played here by the brilliant Laura Linney, an American working at Harry's graphic design company. She falls in love with the creative director Carl, played here by Rodrigo Santoro. When they finally connect at a Christmas party and Carl drives her home, Michael, her mentally ill brother, telephones from a psychiatric hospital, aborting their tryst. On Christmas Eve, they are both working late and Carl tries to find words, but just wishes her a Merry Christmas and leaves. In tears, Sarah calls Michael and visits him to give him his Christmas gift. It's just a very sad, frustrating and poignant moment within the film. You even get proper fairy tale endings, like of course the story of David, who of course turns out to be Karen's brother, who is a Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, and then falls for his junior member of staff, Natalie, at 10 Downing Street. It's just a nice, fun, easy story. As I say, this is one of those films that just never dates. The music is fantastic, the stories are brilliant, and the acting is absolutely superb. And Richard Curtis has really delivered on one of the most creative and touching movies that I've ever seen. It never gets too schmaltzy. It never overstays its welcome. And like I said, if there's a story that you don't particularly like, well, the next one will just blow you away. As romantic comedies go, this movie hits the ball out of the park. And as for Christmas movies, this is one of the best Christmas movies you could ever hope to watch. And it's one of those films that you can watch time and time again and always smile, laugh, cry, or just enjoy as a fantastic all-round film. Love Actually gets a 9.5 out of 10.